All right, hello everyone. Welcome to this video. This guide is gonna be the easiest weak aura guide you've ever seen. It's gonna get straight to the point, how you can make your own weak auras, and how the whole system works. Because a lot of videos out there, I'm sure as you know, if you're trying to make weak auras, are really confusing and they're complex and they skip over a lot of the basics. So this is a very basic guide on how to actually create your own weak auras. Because with me, I like to make pretty much all of my weak auras because I just feel as if it makes everything a lot easier. Now, typically, as you know, I, pro I always main monk, but I hopped on a fresh uh, warlock. That way I can start from scratch because on my warlock, I have no weak auras. I have uh, my monk weak auras and mythic plus, but I don't have any weak auras in my warlock. Now, to simplify this, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna show you how you can track dots on your target, how you can track certain cooldowns, um, how you can track certain buffs you have, and kind of just how to actually make a weak aura and cool things that you can do with them. Now, obviously to start off, you have to have the weak aura add-on installed. If you don't have it installed, then just go install it. You could use something like Curse Forge. That, I mean, that's not what this video is for. But basically, in order to open up weak auras, you will do slash WA in chat, which brings up this tab, or you can find it somewhere on your mini map or somewhere in here, and then you press, uh, which one is it? Weak cores, and then it opens up this tab right here. So very simple, okay? One thing to keep in mind is you cannot open it up in combat. So if I try to, it says options will open after combat. So if I'm in combat, weak cores will not open. Um, oh, I just did that. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now to start off with actually making a weak aura, there, these right here, when you see this icon, it means that it's in a folder. In my opinion, especially if you're making a lot of weak ores for yourself, it's best to organize them in folders. However, to each their own, you can organize them however it is that you want to do. Now, here it says loaded and on standby. That means that these weak ores are currently loaded on this character or for this specific situation or spec or whatever the case is. In other words, there are icons from these packs that could be displayed. Down here where it says not loaded, so for example, Death Knights. I like Luxos's weak auras, they're very simple, um, but this is a guide to make your own weak auras. But basically, these will only appear on these specific things. So for example, Death Knight, Demon Hunter, Hunter, so on and so forth. Um, but all, you know, you can mix and match them however it is you want. Now, what I do is I'll do group. I always start off by making group. So I press group, and then I'll name it, we'll do Warlock Weak, I, I can't type as you can tell, Warlock Weak Auras. Okay, so now we have the folder. There's nothing in the folder, but there, and there's two ways that you can go about making weak ores. You can do pre-made weak ores, which gives you tons of options on weak ores that you can make, which is what, we'll, is what we're gonna be doing for a lot in this video. But for whatever reason, if you're looking for a specific ability that's not in here, then you'll have to then you'll have to make it from scratch, which is an icon, and then you'll do it there. But I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit. As a warlock, one thing that we should probably be tracking is our immolate duration on our target. So for example, when I cast immolate, instead of always pay t paying attention to this small buff right here, I wanna have something big on my screen that's telling me how long I have uh, immolate on my target. So to do this, we're gonna open up weak ores. And so we're gonna press and make sure we have this folder selected. Also, these little icons right here is how you can view and toggle it if you're in this edit mode. So for example, with my monk weak ores, if I press this, I can see everything, I can see all my monk weak ores. If I wanna get rid of it, I just press this and it goes away. So just something to keep in mind if you're wanting to use it. So I have this selected because it's highlighted blue. I'm gonna go to pre-made aura because I'd rather have a pre-made weak aura rather than have to make them from scratch myself. So pre-made aura. You're, you're always going to do icon unless you're wanting to use a bar for something. Um, especially when you're first starting off, you could, talk, you could mess around with all these other options, but you're always gonna press icon. So once again, you're gonna do pre-made auras, you're gonna do icon. You can choose the size of the icon, it doesn't really matter because you can change it regardless, but I, for my UI scale, I prefer a big icon. So I'm gonna click on icon, big icon. Now, because MLA is a debuff, I'm gonna click on the debuffs. There's buffs, which are all of these right here. And then there's debuffs, which are negative uh, things that, that will be applied to your target. Things such as immolate. So super simple. I'm going to click on immolate. Now, these options are going to show up. You can. This is completely up to preference, and I will show you all three differences. So show only if debuffed. Personally, this is what I like to use. So this, uh, this icon will only show up if the target has the debuff. So for example, I have my target selected. I'm gonna press immolate. And now it'll pop up right here with the duration that's left on the dot. Now if I look away, it's gonna go away. It just shows my current target, which honestly is fine because if I'm fighting multiple targets, I just wanna make sure my main target has immolate on it. Now, 
I'm gonna do it again. So debuffs, immolate, but we're gonna do always show. And then, so always show means that it's always, so if I'm looking at my target, it's always gonna show up. However, if I press immolate, then it's gonna, it's gonna have this icon, it's gonna have this little proc glow around it, showing that it's active and on the target. Um, and then finally, uh, the final one that you can use is always show, and then it'll be gray if it's not active. So for example, uh, here, it's, it's on the target, so we'll, we'll let it kind of go away. So you see I was kind of grayed out, however when I apply it, then it'll kind of light up with the cooldown on it. Personally, I like the one where it just shows whenever it's applied and it goes away whenever it's not, but it is all up to preference and all three of these styles are completely customizable. But for the sake of this video, um, and because my opinion is right, I, we're, I'm gonna show you how to use this one. Now, first off, we're gonna click on this. As you can tell, with this little arrow, you can make it as big or as small as you want. Like, realistically, if I really wanted to, I could make it apply this big when I have a, the debuff MLA on someone. Um, but realistically, so here are all of the different tabs for the editing the specific weak aura. There's display, which here you can change um, how big it is, the size, the color, all that stuff. Trigger right here, which we'll get into this later, is actually where, where how the weak aura works. So for example, with this, it's tracking this specific spell ID, which anytime this is applied to a target, any one of these spell IDs, then this icon pops up. And so it's based off of the name. So it's very specific, the aura, target, and debuff. Conditions, don't worry about this until later. Actions, you can play a chat message anytime a weak aura appears on your screen. There's, you could play a sound. Um, you know, there's a lot of cool things that you can do with weak auras. Now load. Now this is this is very important, okay? With a lot of weak auras, you're gonna wanna make them to where they load only in combat, but with this one specifically, it doesn't matter because it will only load in combat regardless because it's only going to appear if my target has a debuff. So you can do in combat, you can do out of combat, or you can just keep it blank. You can make weak all weak auras, make it to where they only occur when you're alive, when you're in war mode, when you're mounted, when you're in an encounter, uh, such as a dungeon boss or a raid boss. Um, you can make it to where it only appears when you're in a specific talent, uh, in a hero talent, on, on a race, if you're doing race stuff, a faction, a level. As you can tell, I'm just rambling. You, you can tell there's a whole bunch of different modifiers that you can add on to make it appear in certain situations. You can even do class and spec. So let's, so right here, class and spec. I want it in destruction because it's the only one that has immolate and you can go from there. Now I'm gonna go to display. So personally, I like where it shows tool tip on mouse over. Now what this means is whenever I check mark this, which is in the display tab, whenever I apply emulate, if I hover over it, it'll tell me what the ability is and what it does um, instead of having to hover over here. Once again, it's completely preference. I just personally like my weak orders to show the tool tip. Um, you can also change to where it has a swipe or doesn't have a swipe. You can make it to where it hides the timer text if you just want the swipe, or you can show how, mu how much time is on there. You can end verse as well. You can show an edge on the timer. Um, you can show blizzard cooldown reduction or an add-on. There's different ways you can go about it. Um, now, one thing as well is you can also add a glow. So anytime that this, you can make it to where anytime that this weak aura pops up on your screen, if you press show glow, this will pop up around it. You could also do a proc glow as well. I like the proc glow, I just feel like it looks more cleaner than the other one. Um, so that's another thing that you could do. So typically when I make a weak aura, I will add tool tip over mouse over. I'll kind of mess with this. Um, if you want to be a specific size, if you click position and size settings. So let's say I want to make this 75. So I'll go right here, 75, enter, 75, enter. Oh, I did 73, I don't know how to type. And then it'll pop up like this. Very simple, straightforward. You know, as you can tell, you can really customize weak auras a lot. And a lot of times, whenever you download weak aura packs from other creators, they have way too many things that you really don't want to keep track of. Um, so hopefully this specific part explains how you, everything you can do to mess around with the weak aura. But now I'm going to get into how this actually looks like when you have a lot of weak auras. So with emulate, what, what I'm going to do is, so we'll keep emulate right here. Now, let's, let's say I want to keep track of... I want to keep track of when I press my cooldowns. So unending resolved. So I'm going to press new weak aura. I'm still in the warlock weak aura pack. So I'm going to press pre-made aura, icon, big icon, buffs, because it is a buff specifically to my character. And what is this? Unending resolve. So we're going to look around here. It's in, it's in alphabetical order, unending resolves. 
So I'm going to click on this. I, once again, I like only show if buffed, but you can do, you can toggle with any of these options. So I'm going to press this. It's going to pop up in the middle of my screen. I'm going to put it right here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Now on a lot of these weak auras, as you're going to tell, there's this little one in the right here, and this is the amount of stacks that it has. Depending on the weak aura, you actually want this, but for a lot of them, you don't. So to get rid of it, you're going to go right here to the text. You see right here where it says, uh, percentage S, that's displaying the stacks that this buff has. So I'm going to just delete it, and then it gets rid of that little one. And then the same thing with Immolate, delete this, and it gets rid of that as well. So now if let's say I get in combat and I do Immolate, and then I press my cooldown, it'll pop up right here. So now I'm tracking, but I'm tracking both my Immolate and I'm tracking how long I have on this defensive. Now for the next step, let's say I want to track how many how many soul shards I have, because that's something that a lot of people, especially as a warlock, you should be tracking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press new weak aura, pre-made auras, except this time, instead of pressing icon, I'm going to press progress bar. So we're going to press progress bar. You can do horizontal or vertical, but we'll do ver horizontal. Now we're going to do resources and we do soul shards. So now when I press this, this bar gets put on screen. Now it looks kind of kind of wonky. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, I already know my, my character's name. I don't need my name on here. So I'm gonna scroll down here to where it says text. So percentage N means it's the name. I'm gonna delete this. Now text. Now uh, percentage P. This means this is gonna show how many soul shards I actually have. So with this, I'm gonna increase the size. So this three is gonna show how many soul shards I actually have. And another thing I can do is anchors, right? So if I press this, I want this to be in the center of the progress bar. So I'm gonna, here where it says left, I'm gonna change it to the center. So now it's in the center, but I want I want the bar to be purple. So I'm gonna go up here. Once again, I'm only in the display tab. I'm not messing with any of the other tabs. Bar gradient start. I want it to be purple. You change this, and then easily change the color of the bar. Gradient end, well, let's say I just want it to do this. Sick, so now I have this bar. So now if I exit out, it's now, keeping track of my soul shards. And so it'll tell me the exact amount I have, and then just kind of go from there. Just like that. And I'm still tracking my emulate. But now that I'm out of combat, I, I don't want this big bar on my screen. It's really annoying and it's in the way. So now what you'll want to do, you'll want to click on soul shards or whichever week or it is. You'll go to load. And then up at the top where it says in combat, you'll check mark this. Whenever it's green, it means that th this bar will only appear if you are in combat. So let's say I want the bar, well, let's say I want my soul shards right here. Let's say I want my emulate right here. And I want my unending resolve right here above my health bar. That way I know whenever I press the defensive. So I'm going to press emulate. And so cool. Now it's keeping track of my soul shards and it's going to tell me whenever I spin them. And just like that, I now have a bar that can keep track of my soul shards and I'm keeping track of my emulate without having to pay attention to the small things on my screen. Now, once again, you can customize the size, you can customize where it's placed on your screen. Really, the options with weak ores are endless. It, it's, it's actually pretty crazy, especially whenever you make them on your own. You can get as creative as you want with it. Now, I want to keep track of, of my uh, conflagrate. I don't know how to pronounce it. I want to keep track of how many of how many stacks I have of that. So we're going to do new weak aura, pre-made, icon big icon. Now, is it a buff or a debuff? It's actually a cooldown. So we're going to press cooldown. We're going to press this, uh, this. So what we can do as well, so charge tracking, there's different ways that you can go about this. So what I like to do with this, because it has two charges, charge tracking, always shows the aura turns blue on insufficient resources. So I'll press this. And so it's a bit too small. So let's, let's say we'll make it bigger. Let's do a uh, tooltip on mouse over. Make sure it's only loaded in combat. And so now what I'll want to do, so it has the it has the stacks on it. So now let's see what this looks like in combat. So look, it shows two right here in the corner, but I don't want it in the corner. I want it in the middle of the icon so I know how much how many stacks I have. What you'll want to do is you'll want to click on the weak aura and then you'll want to go to right here where it says stacks where it says anchors, because the anchor is going to be where it's anchored at on the weak aura. You'll press this. So frame to center. And then let's say I want to increase the size of it. 
And so if I go up here, we're going to high timer text. So now it's just gonna show the amount of stacks that I have. And so now whenever I'm in combat, look at that. Now it's gonna tell me how many stacks I have. And then it'll have a loading bar whenever I don't have the stacks. And just like that, I'm already keeping track of multiple things at my own pace. Now, once again, I'm making these a lot larger than how I would typically have them, but I'm just giving you an example and making it as easy as possible to follow. Now, as a Warlock, oftentimes, whenever he's Burning Rush, which is our movement speed ability, it takes damage from our health. And a lot of times, we forget that it's even turned on in combat. And so I'm going to show you what you want to do to actually make it. So you'll once again, select Warlock Weak Auras, New Aura, Pre-Made, Icon, Big Icon. You'll want to do Buffs because it's a buff that's applied to you. And then so it's gonna be Burning Rush. So Burning Rush, only show if buffed. So now, but once again, I'll make it bigger if I want. And then what I'll do is I'll do tooltip over mouse over. I'll get rid of the stacks because there's no need to keep track of it. Load, um, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll keep it loading anytime I use it. So now, if I exit out, anytime I'm Burning Rush, I, it will now pop up on my screen. And then if I take it off, it'll go away and so on. So that way, now I have a big reminder on my screen that lets me know if I'm leaving Burning Rush on for way too long than what I'm supposed to leave it for. Now, once again, this is a very, very basic guide on how weak auras work. If you want me to go in more detail on how you can do some more complex weak auras, let me know down in the comments. I just wanted to make a quick video explaining how weak auras work because a lot of, a lot of these are really complicated and don't go over the basics and fundamentals. Um, but yeah, other than that, if you enjoyed, feel free to leave down your feedback and uh, let me know what videos you guys want me to make in the future. I appreciate you for being here and existing and y'all have a nice day. This was Kobe Go. Take care and peace.